Hello! Guys, before this video begins, I gotta say thank you all so much for 100,000 subscribers. I started this channel over eight years ago while I was at university, making some silly FIFA videos where even then I met some lifelong friends through the platform. For example, back when he had a YouTube channel, I did a FIFA series with Irfan back in 2017 where we made a tournament with all the Balkan countries and the year after we met each other in Russia for the World Cup. Three years later, he became my roommate for a bit where he helped me with many videos and living in a different state really allowed me to focus on my channel and grow it to where it is today. Now, I moved to Croatia for the year with hope to expand the content even further. So yeah, YouTube has been an absolute adventure and is allowing me to move all across the place. So I can't thank you guys enough for giving me the life I have today. I don't know if I could really consider this a 100k special, but I decided to bring back the tier list. It's been a long time since I uploaded the last one. I think it's been about four or five months. And I thought of the idea to rank every single country's best World Cup performance. There are a total of 80 countries that have qualified for the World Cup. There are other countries throughout history that also don't exist anymore, such as the likes of Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia. But for those countries, I'm going over only the present day countries. So for example, Croatia, Serbia, Czech Republic, you get the point. Basically, if you don't see your country on this list, it's because they never played in a World Cup. But look how many we have on the bottom. I don't know how long this will take. Some I definitely will be more brief than others on. Now, it's kind of hard to evaluate some of these teams. Throughout most of the tier lists, I will base it off of how far the country actually went in their best ever tournament. But then there will be times where I'll be a tad bit lenient for them. As for example, they could get knocked out of the group stage but still pull off a spectacular performance, especially for their standards or something like that. So sometimes I may sway my generosity. Feel free to call me out in the comments if I am a bit imbalanced on this. It's a long list. It's 80, well actually 79 teams since we're not including West Germany. Unless I miss a team or something and I catch myself later on, we're going to be going mostly in alphabetical order. So starting off with Algeria. They qualified a total of four times and their best ever run was in their last appearance in a World Cup, which was in 2014. That year they made it to the round of 16. And they made it out of a group with Belgium, Russia, and South Korea, and then got knocked out by the champions of that very tournament, Germany, in admirable fashion. Out of all of Germany's matches, this is the match that he seemed to struggle the most in, as some matches later on seemed to be minimal trouble. In each of Algeria's matches, they scored at least one goal. It's not the deepest World Cup run, of course, but they really put in a notable effort, and if they were able to get past that round of 16 hurdle, this run would have a lot more recognition. So it's a bit of a weird one to start off with. I'm probably going to be putting most of the round of 16 teams at sea, but there could be a few generous throw-ins. Algeria could easily be one of them, but I still think it is C tier. I really think it's on edge though. It genuinely is a C plus for them. Now moving on to Angola. Their only appearance at the World Cup was in 2006 where they got knocked out of the group stage. They still managed to pick up two points though and kept every single match close. Even their loss against Portugal was just 1-0. Their only goal in the tournament though was against Iran. It would have been interesting to see them get out of their group with minimal goal scoring but they still got knocked out of the group stage and i hate to sound cruel it seems like a forgetful campaign i'm putting them at d now moving on to our first s tier country on this list argentina obviously every world cup champion deserves to be in the s tier and argentina have three trophies to show off for and although we're going to remember the most recent tournament with messi lifting the trophy their best run statistically was in 1986 as they finished the campaign undefeated with six wins and one draw it contains potentially the most iconic world cup goal maradona's hand of god against england in the quarterfinals but the legend also scored a beauty in the same match which got them to the semi to defeat Belgium 2-0 and then had a thriller final against Germany which finished 3-2. I know the last World Cup final was a thriller as well but it just goes to show that this run was also very impressive. The hand of God situation was obviously one thing but statistically this is Argentina's best ever World Cup run and they still have a lot of S tier performances to rely on if this isn't it. Now moving on to Australia they made it to the round of 16 twice in 2006 and in 2022 but which of the runs was better both were notable and quite even statistically. There's less of a goal difference in 2006 by just one but Australia did grab more wins in 2022, but also more losses. In 2022, they put such an admirable fight against Argentina, but they did against Italy as well in 2006, also in the round of 16, only losing by one goal in each of the matches. It's also worth noting that both of these opponents went on to be champions that same year. So really, both of these runs are extremely even for Australia. In 2022, they were so easy to write off as they did not have the most impressive qualifier campaign that maybe I would argue that there was more of a shock factor recently. They also sent Denmark home early, who were everyone's quote-unquote dark horses of the tournament. I really wish Australia broke that round of 16 hurdle because these are both notable performances, just not enough to be B tier in my opinion. Truly though, a C plus. Now moving on to Austria, who haven't qualified for a World Cup since 1998, but they have had some very notable runs before then. Their best ever one was third place in 1954. 
They produced some of the craziest scorelines. It did start dull against Scotland in the group stage where it finished 1-0, but then they destroyed Czechoslovakia 5-0 right after. And in the quarterfinals, they defeated Switzerland 7-5. That is literally one of the most unpredictable scorelines, but then they did lose to West Germany 6-1. This obviously sent them to the third place matchup where they did win that against Uruguay 3-1. Already getting third place is notable and deserves an A, but this run was truly all over the place. Belgium's best ever run was also third place, so I'm giving them an A as well. This happened in 2018 where many were still critical of this performance as this truly was their golden generation and their perfect chance to win the World Cup. They were even my favorites at the time and I truly thought this was their opportunity after they beat Brazil in the quarterfinals. But just off of one French corner in the semis by Umtiti crushed all of their hopes and dreams. Regardless, just falling short in this manner and still grabbing bronze deserves A in my book. Moving on to Bolivia though, they qualified for the World Cup a total of three times and failed to get a win in any of the tournaments. Their best ever result was a nil-nil draw against South Korea in 1994. I don't think this deserves a backstory, I'm sorry, Bolivia will be at the bottom. Moving on to Bosnia, their only World Cup appearance was in 2014 since becoming an independent nation. They got knocked out of the group stage, but they still grabbed a solid win against Iran, finishing 3-1. Their losses against Argentina and Nigeria were narrow and unfortunate. As much as I want to show Bosnia some love, it's not enough to put them higher than D. Moving on to our second S-tier team, Brazil, the national team with the most World Cups, there's so many incredible stories to pick. In 1970 and 2002, they did not just go undefeated, but they also finished both campaigns with zero draws. 6 for 6 wins in 1970, 7 for 7 wins in 2002. 1970 was obviously iconic as it was the third and final World Cup Pele won, but the goal difference in 2002 was much better as they had more clean sheets. Ronaldo went on to win the Golden Boot scoring 8 goals that tournament, the second top goal scorer in World Cup history. But you get the point, Brazil without a doubt has many S-tier performances. Now moving on to Bulgaria, this national team had their best ever run in 1994 and it was an outrageous tournament for sure. They were the biggest surprise of this tournament in particular as they have never won a game in all of their previous World Cup appearances. It started off poorly with a 3-0 loss to Nigeria, but then they beat Greece and Argentina with convincing scorelines. This saw them finishing second, sharing points with both Nigeria and Argentina. They then went on to knock out Mexico on penalties in the round of 16, and then defeated the defending champions Germany in the quarterfinals with a 2-1 win. A narrow loss to Italy in the semis, and a hefty loss in the third place playoff to Sweden granted this country fourth. I think without a doubt this country deserves an A. Moving on to Cameroon's best run, it was in 1990 and it was very notable. They upset Argentina in the group and beat Romania. Although they lost to the USSR 4-0, they still topped their group. In the round of 16, they defeated Colombia and then lost to England 3-2 in extra time. Despite that blow to the USSR, this was a remarkable run as at the time, this was the furthest any African nation have made it in the World Cup. Semi-finals would have been great, but I'm gonna give this country a B. Moving on to Canada, they have only qualified for two World Cups. And despite them having a phenomenal qualifier campaign, for the recent one, they still have not gotten a single win in the world's biggest stage. Sorry, but Canada are definitely at the bottom. Now moving on to Chile, who most times failed to make it past the group stage or the round of 16, but in 1962, they clinched third place on their own home soil. They were in a group filled with solid European teams and finished second, then beat the Soviet Union but lost to Brazil in the semis. They won the bronze medal though after a 90th minute goal against Yugoslavia. Fair play Chile, a medal is a medal, A is deserved. Now taking a look at China, their only appearance was in 2002 where they got 3 for 3 losses against Brazil, Turkey, and Costa Rica. So yeah, they're obviously gonna have to be in the bottom. But moving on to Colombia, their best and most memorable run was in 2014 where the James Rodriguez hype really came to life. He was one of the best players of that tournament, leaving the country some incredible moments to take them to the quarterfinals. It's not the furthest run of course, but it is still one where so many will never forget. I think this deserves a B+. The same can be said about Costa Rica as in the same exact tournament, they also made it just as far. But they really were the true underdogs of this tournament, topping their group, which was considered the group of death at the time. Absolutely nobody expected that. Then they beat Greece in the round of 16 and lost to Netherlands in the quarterfinals on penalties. Same outcome essentially as Colombia, however, topping such a difficult group as so many people wrote off Costa Rica with such little expectation, I think this country deserves to be boosted up a little bit. Also, just falling short to Netherlands on penalties is so impressive, I'm gonna have to give them an A. Moving on to Croatia. This this national team made it to the top three of the World Cup three times in their history, and they have only been competing in the tournament since 1990. 
but the best of them all was obviously when they were finalists in 2018. From thrashing Argentina in the group stage, to having dramatic penalty shootouts in the round of 16 to quarterfinals, to defeating England in extra time in the semis. It was heartbreak when they could not win the trophy at the end against France, but they had such a dramatic display. And what's even crazier is that they've been able to reach these heights with the population of just less than 4 million people. I really wish I could put us at S tier, but for me, you have to win the actual trophy to deserve that ranking. Definitely an A is deserved, and I would argue that so far it is one of the best A's on this list. Moving on to Cuba, the third ever World Cup was Cuba's only appearance at the World Cup, where they made it to the quarterfinals. Keep in mind, at this tournament in specific, there was no group stage. It went straight to a round of 16 bracket where Cuba faced Romania. The match was a thriller where it finished 2-2 in normal time, 3-3 after extra time. Instead of going to penalties, the match was replayed and Cuba grabbed a 2-1 win. Cuba's first and only World Cup win, as in their second match, they got obliterated by Sweden 8-0. If they they didn't get obliterated by Sweden. If it was an acceptable loss, I would have put them at the C tier, but 8 0 is too much. I'm sorry, Cuba have to go at D. Czech Republic is a tricky one to analyze, as for a good chunk of their history, they played as Czechoslovakia. If we were to base it off of Czechoslovakia, I would give them an A, as they were runners up twice. Unfortunately, their only appearance as just Czech Republic was a group stage finish in 2006, with a 3 0 win against the USA at the beginning, but then falling short to Ghana and Italy. Czechia seemed to have a hopeful start, but terribly crumbled. I'm sorry, that's not good enough for me. I'm putting them at D. Now taking a look at everyone's dark horse for the last World Cup, Denmark. Yeah, that did not turn out well, but thankfully they have had better World Cups. Their best one was in 1998, where they made it to the quarterfinals. It started with a second place group stage finish, only losing to group leaders France. Once the knockouts arrived, they destroyed Nigeria 4-1 in the round of 16, and then just fell short to Brazil in one of the most exciting World Cup matches this year in particular. It finished 3 two with so many exciting goals in place. Quarterfinals makes me think this should be a B, but Denmark were really fired up in this tournament. It truly is a shame they had to come across Brazil. Ah, oh, it's a B plus. Truly, I'll have to leave it at that. Ecuador's best run was in 2006 where they made it to the round of 16. They had convincing displays against Poland and Costa Rica, but couldn't do anything against the Giants, Germany, and England. Tough luck on who they had to face later on, but this grants them a C for me. Going to Egypt, they never made it out of the group stage. Well, technically they did in 1934, because they didn't play in one. I don't know if we can count that as their best ever run though, especially if they played in more matches than others. In 1990, to be fair to them, they did get two draws, one of them against Netherlands, but still zero wins. I'll obviously have to put them at D, but what's crazy about this country is that they have won more Africa Cup of Nations than any any country, yet they have still technically never made it out of the group stage. Kind of sucks. Let's keep it simple with El Salvador. They're at the bottom because both times they qualified for the World Cup, it was three for three losses. Their run in 1970 was better than in 1982 because in 1982 they had one of the worst World Cup losses in history, losing to Hungary 10 to 1. Now going to our third S tier team on this list, England. The one time it came home was in 1966, where England defeated West Germany 4 to 2 in the final, and Hurst scored the first ever World Cup. Cup final hat trick. They did not have the easiest run either. Mexico, Uruguay, and France in their group, Argentina and Portugal in the knockouts, all difficult teams, all credit to England, easy S. Of course, they were followed with another S tier team, France. Both of their World Cup wins in 1998 and 2018 have the same records of wins and draws, but 1998 was slightly better in terms of their overall goal difference. The only match where it really seemed like they were struggling on the surface was against Italy in the quarterfinals, where it finished nil-nil and it had to go to penalties. A few of their matches went at ease, including the World Cup final against Brazil where they won 3-0 with the Zidane brace. Hate to be dull, but three back-to-back -back S's now because next is Germany. Out of the four times Germany won the World Cup, their best ever won was their most recent in 2014 where they won six times and drew once in the group stage. They also have bragging rights to probably the most famous World Cup match of all time, beating Brazil 7-1 in the semifinals. This team also holds the top World Cup goal scorer of all time, Miroslav Klose, along with many other absolute legends to the game. An iconic World Cup for many years to come, many thanks to Deutschland. Alright, taking a break from World Cup winners, let's move on to Ghana. They have one of the craziest World Cup tales of all time, when in 2010 they made it to the quarterfinals. They were being cheered by the entire host country to have a deep run at the time, with hopes to have the best run out of any African nation. It looked to be possible after squeezing out of their group and beating the USA in the round of 16. But they faced Uruguay, which also happened to be one of the craziest World Cup matches. I'm sure you all know the story by now, but in case you don't, the match was tied 1-1, and Luis Suarez made a clear handball to stop a goal from happening. Ghana were gifted a penalty and had the chance to seal their spot in the semis, but Guillaume hit the crossbar. The match then went on to extra time and a penalty shootout, and Uruguay won. Solid run from Ghana, but it could have been so much more. 
absolute heartbreak. There's all this hate for Luis Suarez and I get the bitterness, but at the end of the day, Ghana had the golden opportunity to make it to the semifinals with that penalty and they still blew it. So far, we've been mostly going systematic with the rankings. Apart from Costa Rica, I was a little bit generous with, but I'm going to have to give Ghana a B since they made it to the quarterfinals. But if that penalty went in, it could have been an A. Moving on to Greece, with the most incredible Euro story, had one of the more boring World Cup tales as their best. In 2014, they did the bare minimum to get out of the group stage, demolished by Colombia at the beginning, a nil-nil draw to Japan, and then narrowly beat Ivory Coast. They then lost to Costa Rica on penalties in the round of 16. Sorry guys, I hope the best for the future, but this is a clear C tier. Now for Haiti, their only appearance was in 1974 and they got destroyed every match in the group stage. Their biggest loss was 7-0 to Poland. They're going in D. Honduras never made it out of the group stage, but their best run was in 1982. They finished last place in a tough group and still grabbed two draws against Spain and Northern Ireland. It was a difficult group to be fair, so part of me wants to be generous, but I'm sorry, I'm still gonna have to put them at D. Moving on to a national team that used to be absolutely elite. They really were so close to winning the World Cup twice. It's Hungary. Yes, they were runners-up in both 1938 and 1954. During the era of 1954, they were known as the Golden Team, the only ever loss out of the 69 matches they had from 1950 to 1956 was against Germany in the World Cup final. It's a shame because in that same World Cup, they beat Germany 8-3 in the group stage and even South Korea 9-0. They beat Brazil and Uruguay convincingly, just couldn't do it against Germany again in the final stage. This team was elite. It genuinely is a shame that they could never win the World Cup. I'm going to have to put them at A tier. Iceland's one appearance was in 2018 following their incredible underdog tale in the Euros. They got knocked out of the group stage, but their opening match against Argentina went down memory lane for many, as their goalkeeper Halderson, who is a part-time filmmaker, saved Messi's penalty. The match finished 1-1, to and it was a sign that this would definitely not be Argentina's year to shine. They then lost to Nigeria and Croatia, but left us with some decent memories. This is the smallest country in population to qualify for a World Cup, so it feels harsh to put them so low but I will. Indonesia's one appearance was in 1938, the third ever World Cup to be held, and they played as the Dutch East Indies at the time. They played just one match against Hungary, who like I said were elite at the time, and they lost 6-0 to them. Forgetful stuff, D tier. Now for Iran, this is a tricky one. They qualified for the World Cup quite a few times, but never made it past the group stage. The most memorable run for them though was in 2018, and in my opinion, in that tournament, this was the best team to not qualify for the knockouts. They nearly escaped a group with Portugal, Spain, and Morocco, and salvaged four points, a narrow loss to Spain, and a draw to Portugal on the last match day where they really looked to be in the game and had a chance. That Iran side will forever stick to my brain and it is exactly why I had so much faith in them to do well in the 2022 World Cup. In 2018, I really do think they just got a bit unlucky with the draw and the results were so close, so I'm gonna have to be a bit generous to them. I know they got knocked out of the group stage, but I'm giving them a C. Moving on to Israel, they got two draws in their only appearance, which was in 1970, but they still finished bottom of the group, so yeah, it's a date. Moving on to Italy, obviously S tier, they've had so many World Cup wins but it's hard to evaluate which one's the best, as they did get 4 for 4 wins in 1938, but the tournament has expanded since then. In 2006, when they played 7 matches instead, they got 5 wins and 2 draws. One draw against the USA in the group stage, and then the memorable final against France with the Zidane headbutt had them win on penalties. With more matches, I do think it's fair to say that this was their best ever tournament, and their last World Cup where they had any sort of joy to look back on, as they were terrible in 2010 and 2014 and did not qualify in 2018 and 2022. Obviously though, it's a nation with a lot of legacy in this tournament. Moving on to Ivory Coast. 2006, 2010, and 2014 had this country appear in three back-to-back -back World Cups, and those also being the only years they qualified. Each time, it was a group stage finish, with 2010 being the best as they grabbed a 3-0 win over North Korea, drew to Portugal, and lost to Brazil. I don't know, I was generous with Iran, and now doing this tier list, it makes me think I should have added more tiers to be a bit more specific about my choices. I might have to be generous with Ivory Coast as well. Besides North Korea, obviously, this was a difficult group. They put off a fight against Portugal, but the Brazil loss was not close whatsoever. I don't know, it's tough. D plus, C minus. I'm torn about it. I'm sorry. I told you I was going to be a bit indecisive and unbalanced in this video. I'm going to put Ivory Coast at C. Let's move on to Jamaica. Their only appearance was in 1998, but they only grabbed one win against Japan. They lost to Croatia 3-1 at the beginning and got destroyed by Argentina 5-0. This has to go at the bottom. Moving on to the one team they beat Japan. They have made it to the round of 16 quite a few times. Statistically, the run in 2002 was better by a tad bit, but it's hard to write off what they did 20 years later in the latest World Cup. In a group with Germany, Spain, and Costa Rica, they topped them all. 
only losing to Costa Rica surprisingly. Playing some incredible counter-attacking football, people believe they could do it against Croatia as well in the round of 16. That match was taken in penalties where they did lose but put off a great fight of course, leading at halftime. This to me is Japan's best run, although in 2002 they did have a better goal difference. And I think their group stage performances were so admirable and it's what made most of the world just fall in love with this nation. They did get knocked out in the round of 16, but the group stage was just such a pleasant surprise for many, so I'm going to be putting Japan a little bit higher at B. Now for Kuwait, 1982 was the only time we saw them and they were only able to get a draw against Czechoslovakia so sorry but they're at the long list at the bottom moving on to Mexico both times they made it to the quarterfinals they were the hosts of the tournament but their better run statistically was in 1986 as technically Mexico didn't lose any matches I'm sure you got this by now but when a match is taken to penalties it is considered a draw and that's how they got knocked out of the tournament by West Germany which means throughout the tournament they were undefeated the only other team that they drew against was Paraguay but to be honest this wasn't the most difficult run for Mexico until until they faced West Germany. I can't give Mexico any special exception like I do with Japan, so I'm gonna leave them at B. Morocco though, this side get an A without a doubt. They have the best record out of any African team in this tournament, as in the last one they made it to the semi-finals. A very difficult run as well with the challenging group, and then having to face Spain and Portugal, which means they claimed Al Andalus, but unfortunately they couldn't make it all the way to the final as they did lose to France. They still made one of the biggest marks in this tournament and had one of the most passionate fan bases out there. Now moving on to one of the best best national teams to never win the World Cup, Netherlands. They were back-to-back -back runners up in 1974 and 1978, and then again in 2010. It's hard to compare which was the best out of those three. Obviously, that roster in the 70s was nuts, but statistically, their best run was in 2010. They made it all the way to the final and obviously lost narrowly to Spain from an Iniesta goal. Tough luck for Netherlands. They really could have been in that S tier. It's gonna be a new zealand has one of the more interesting world cup records though the group stage in 2010 was their best where despite getting knocked out in the first round they remained undefeated that's right the three matches all finished in draws in a group with slovakia italy and paraguay just one point behind slovakia to advance is unfortunate so for this very unique experience new zealand possess I will put them at C. All right, as you can see, I'm recording this on a brand new day. I was on a bit of a time crunch as I had the MLS All-Star match to go to. Make sure you check out the video I uploaded for that if you haven't already. I'll leave a link in the description below. But in the meantime, look at what came in the mail. Guys, I seriously can't thank you all enough. Like I said, I've had this channel for so long, but I only took it seriously the past two years and it's just such an amazing feeling to know that there's so many people all over the world watching my content really from the bottom of my heart this means the world it's an absolute beauty anyway back to the tier list we are on nigeria now i believe this country made it to the round of 16 three times but their best run of them all was in 1994 their debut in the world cup they topped a group sharing points with argentina and greece while three of them shared points and then lost to italy in the round of 16 during extra time it was a solid effort but they did lose to both giants they had to face i'm still going to give them a c now for north korea you would expect this side to be at the bottom of this tier list from their performance in 2010 but they actually had quite a solid run in 1966. second in a group topping italy and chile is very impressive the one side they beat in the group stage was italy as well then in the knockouts they had to face portugal and they were up 3-0 at the 25th minute but then portugal went all out with an incredible comeback it finished five to three osebio scoring four goals very interesting one to analyze if they didn't blow a 3-0 lead i would actually give this side some praise and maybe put them a bit higher than kind of systematically ranking them and i know portugal is an incredible national team but the fact that they had them on lockdown at the beginning and blew such a massive lead such a massive advantage so i'm gonna have to put them at c since this was the first round of the knockouts it is labeled as the quarterfinals but the tournament was a lot smaller back then moving on to northern ireland they saw their best round in 1958 when they made it out of a group stage but got knocked out straight away after they were actually in a very difficult group czechoslovakia was obviously very solid and they beat them lost to argentina but drew to west germany unfortunately in the quarterfinals they got destroyed by france 4 0 so i will put them at c norway's run in 1998 was very interesting as they made it out of a group with brazil morocco and scotland undefeated they drew to Morocco and Scotland, but then on the final day, they beat Brazil. In competitive matches, they are the only national team to remain undefeated to Brazil, which is insane. It used to even be across friendlies, but Senegal got the best of Brazil recently. Anyway, after that, they faced Italy in the round of 16 and lost 1-0 from a very early goal. It was a memorable run, but obviously not the best stretch in terms of how far they went. Gotta give them credit, though, for beating Brazil and staying undefeated in the group stage. I'm gonna be generous to Norway. I think this is worth a B-. Moving on to Panama, their only World Cup appearance was in 2018 when 
they qualified over the United States. Unfortunately, they were in a deadly group and got three for three losses with a minus nine goal difference. We got a lot of teams at the bottom and they're gonna have to join them. Moving on to a nation that absolutely adores the South African World Cup, it's Paraguay. For they had a deep run making it to the quarterfinals under Tata Martino, an infamous manager for many other clubs and countries, but not for the Paraguayans. They topped their group with Slovakia, New Zealand, and Italy. They beat Japan in the round of 16 on penalties, Damn, sorry, Japan. And then lost to the World Cup champion Spain in the quarterfinals from an 83rd minute David Villa goal. Paraguay kept every match tight with three draws in this run and getting knocked out by only one goal. Tata Martino got the best out of this nation. It was definitely an impressive display. I think this is worthy of a B plus. All right, now I'm looking. I somehow missed DR Congo. I knew this could have happened eventually, but let's go back to them. They qualified once in 1974 when they were known as Zaire and they're infamously known to have one of the worst World Cup runs in history. It started with a 2-0 to Scotland, a 9-0 blow to Yugoslavia, and then failing to beat Brazil 3-0. Yeah, they are 100% at the very bottom. All right, now going back to the Ps, let's move on to Peru. In 1970, Peru made it to the quarterfinals, but obviously at the time, it was the first round of the knockouts. They beat Bulgaria 3-2, destroyed Morocco 3-0, and then they went on to lose to two giants in football. First was Germany in the group stage, and then got knocked out in the quarterfinals to Brazil 4-2. A strong attack for sure we saw from this nation, with Kubila scoring five goals in this tournament. That is outstanding especially while only playing four matches. The defense, though, ruined the dream. Besides that clean sheet in Morocco, they conceded way too much. This is either a B- or a C+. Plus but I'm sorry, Peru, I'm gonna put you guys at the C tier. Moving on to Poland now, they have made it to third place twice in 1974 and 1982. The better run was definitely in 1974 as they had six wins and one loss. Lato won the golden boot this tournament as well with seven goals. This World Cup featured two group stages. The first one, Poland got three for three wins in a group with Argentina, Italy, and Haiti. In the second group, they fell to second under West Germany, but finished above Sweden and Yugoslavia. They then were sent to the third place matchup where they beat Brazil 1-0. If only they beat Germany, but still this was a phenomenal performance by Polska, I'm going to be putting them at A. One of the best national teams to never win the World Cup, Portugal, had their best run in 1966 where they finished third. They scored three goals in each of the group stage matches against Hungary, Bulgaria, and Brazil. They had that insane comeback against North Korea in the quarterfinals, which I mentioned, and then they lost to England, the champions, in the semifinals. Eusebio still lit up the tournament, though, scoring seven goals, including the third place match against the Soviet Union. It's an A, definitely. Just still waiting for them to actually lift the trophy. All right, now we all know about Qatar. Their debut in the tournament was when they were the hosts and they got humiliated with three for three losses. They obviously didn't even go through the ropes of qualifying for this tournament since they were the hosts. Yeah, this is easily at the bottom at D. Ireland's run in 1990 is one of the most fascinating ones, making it to the quarterfinals without winning a single game technically. Three draws in the group stage, finishing over Netherlands, who did the same exact thing. Then another match, technically considered a draw as they advanced over Romania on penalties, followed with a 1-0 loss to Italy in the quarters. Italy keeps narrowly breaking all of these countries' dreams. Anyway, Ireland clearly played very defensively this tournament and did a fantastic job. They only scored two goals, which is crazy, but I'm going to be giving them a B. Moving on to Russia. Since they played as Russia, their best run was in 2018 on their home soil, making it to the quarterfinals. They demolished Saudi Arabia and Egypt, but then Uruguay gave them a taste of their own medicine. That didn't knock them down, though, as they knocked out Spain on penalties in the round of 16. They took it on penalties again against Croatia, but lost there. It's a B-plus for Russia, I think. They did better than most people expected. They're banned now, obviously, but they did have a good run before that all happened. For Saudi Arabia, yes, they were the one national team to beat Argentina in the last World Cup and shocked everyone. But that was not their best run as they still got knocked out in the group stage that year. Their best ever run was in 1994, making it to the round of 16. In the group stage, they lost to Netherlands, but then beat Morocco and Belgium. And then in the round of 16, they lost to Sweden 3-1. So I think this is an easy C. Moving on to Scotland, they have qualified for the tournament many times, but they have never made it past the group stage. Their best run out of the bunch was in 1974, as at least then they were undefeated with one win and two draws. They beat Zaire and impressively held off Brazil and Yugoslavia, but could not close either of them off. Fair play to them. A group stage disappointment, but obviously, two other teams in that group were very difficult to beat. I will be generous to them and give them a C-. Moving on to Senegal, their best run was in 2002. The country's debuted in the tournament, and surprisingly, this was not their strongest squad. They made it to the quarterfinals after shockingly beating France and drawing with Denmark and Uruguay. Kamado scored a brace against Sweden, which sent them to the quarterfinals, and then they lost to Turkey in extra time 1-0. Nowadays, Senegal are one of the strongest African teams on paper, but back then, they were very much an under dog. So this one was actually very impressive. For me, it's a B+. You can't argue it's an A, but 
I'm going to keep them at B. Since becoming independent, Serbia have always been knocked out in the group stage in the World Cup. Despite beating Germany in 2010, they still fell short at the end. And in 2018 and 2022, they had a very similar group, unfortunate to face Brazil that early twice. The national team had so many incredible players over the years, and it has not been much time since they were independent. But it simply should have been better, so they get a D. Moving on to Slovakia, we got to take a look at Slovakia's independence onwards. And since then, their only appearance in 2010 got them to the round of 16. Ironically, the only team they beat in their group was Italy, as they lost to Paraguay and drew to New Zealand. They then lost to the runners-up Netherlands 2-1 in the round of 16. Not bad for their one appearance, to be honest, but a C nevertheless. Moving on to Slovenia, just two group stage exits since they broke off from Yugoslavia. 2002 was with three losses. 2010 was at least a win, a draw, and a loss. England and USA were both in front of them by just one point and the only team they lost to was England. Very unfortunate for Slovenia, as this wasn't a terrible performance by any means, but I still think it isn't worthy of anything else than a D, so yeah, D+. Moving on to South Africa, all three times they qualified for the World Cup, they got knocked down the group stage, even when they were the hosts. Statistically, they did a tad bit better in 2002 than in 2010, and got very unlucky to share points with Paraguay and finish third. They drew with Paraguay, beat Slovenia, and narrowly lost to Spain while scoring two goals against them. Feels rough being this harsh, but another D+. South Korea's infamous run in 2002 got them fourth place to make them have the best run out of any Asian country. It truly was infamous though, as there were many questionable matches going their way. People claim it to be one of the most corrupt World Cups, and it definitely was in recent years. The match against Italy was the craziest of them all, they beat Spain on penalties after, and then just narrowly lost to Germany. By the way, the rest of these rankings are, obviously South Korea should easily get an A. But since it just feels a bit illegitimate, I'm gonna put them down one to B. I got this punishment when I was in school too, so I think it's fair. Spain is obviously an S. Their only World Cup win in 2010 was unique as almost all their wins were only by one goal, but an S regardless as they did win the tournament. When Sweden were hosted in 1958, they made it all the way to the final. There, Brazil were able to beat them 5-2. They had some tremendous wins in this tournament though, such as beating West Germany in the semi-finals 3-1. The only time they were really halted in this run, besides the final obviously, was against Wales where they drew with them 0-0. Definitely an A-tier performance. Moving on to Switzerland, it's hard to evaluate which of their runs was the best, as technically their best was making it to the quarterfinals, but that was back when the tournament was smaller. In 2006, they only made it to the round of 16, but they actually had a better record than any of their quarterfinal performances. They technically never got a loss, as they were eliminated on penalties by Ukraine. They topped their group prior to that, even over France. So I gotta say, this should be their best run in the World Cup. And I think it goes as far as saying B-, minus, although it easily could be a C since it is pretty impressive that they topped the group and just fell short on penalties. In that same World Cup, Togo got 3-for-3 three three losses, so I'm going to be putting them at D, as that was their only appearance at the World Cup. So yeah, that was obviously their debut in the World Cup, just like Trinidad and Tobago, who also got knocked out in the group stage, so they'll join them. Tunisia always got knocked out of the group stage, but their best fight was in 1978, where they beat Mexico, drew to West Germany, but lost to Poland. Still though, not good enough as West Germany and Poland remained undefeated, so Tunisia get a D. Turkey only qualified for the World Cup twice, once in 1954 and then again in 2002. The first time was a group stage exit in 1954 and the second time they finished third place in 2002. They made it out of their group with the same record as Tunisia but continued to rise to nearly the top after narrowly beating Japan, Senegal but then losing to Brazil, the champions in the semis. Say what you want about their road there but this is A tier from Turkey. Since the end of the USSR, Ukraine only qualified for the World Cup once in 2006 but they made it all the way to the quarterfinals. They got destroyed by Spain at the beginning, but then beat Tunisia and Saudi Arabia. Then they beat Switzerland in what I said was their best run in the World Cup, but then lost to Italy 3-0 in the quarters. Feels weird to put them as the same tier as Switzerland since they technically did better, but they also get a B for me. Wow. I just realized a terrible mistake in this video. I'll probably correct myself earlier throughout the edit, but when I was going over Kuwait, I put in the UAE flag instead. And then we put Kuwait's flag at the bottom. I swear, guys, my flag knowledge isn't that bad. I genuinely did not see that. That's okay. I don't really have to move anything. I'll just put Kuwait there as well, as the UAE also are definitely a D because their only World Cup appearance was 
three for three losses and that was in 1990 so hopefully we see this side in the next world cup sorry i missed another nation alphabetically let's go back to romania they might have gotten heartbroken against ireland in 1990 but in the next world cup they saw their best ever performance making it to the quarterfinals in the group stage they suffered a heavy loss to switzerland but they still beat colombia and the usa and then they beat argentina 3-2 in the round of 16. they then suffered a penalty loss again to get knocked out but at least they made it to the quarterfinals but this time it was to sweden with the scoreline of 2-2 b plus for for Romania unfortunate way to get knocked out of the tournament and then i somehow missed iraq i'm so sorry guys well their only appearance was in 1986 where they got three for three losses so they'll be at d but then let's go back to a more positive note uruguay they are our last team in the s tier category their best world cup was their first ever one which was hosted in their own country they got four for four wins getting tremendous results like beating yugoslavia 6-1 in the semis and argentina 4-2 in the final now for the usa their best run was also in the first ever world cup where they got got third place they topped their group with Paraguay and Belgium they did lose to Argentina in the semi-final six to one which in my opinion needs to give this run a downgrade if they didn't lose so heavily it would be an A but I'm giving them a B plus since this tournament was obviously much smaller than the rest it's hard to compare and for the last team we're looking at Wales they made it to the quarterfinals in 1958 grabbing three for three draws in the group stage and then beating Hungary 2-1 in the playoffs their quarterfinal exit was to Brazil where they lost narrowly this is a fair B performance much better than they did in 2022 so there you have it guys this is the complete tier list a long one so sorry if i was brief on some of the countries and once again apologies for mixing up the order sometimes i did just glance over a country while going down my list but yeah guys let me know if you have any disagreements with my tier list as always obviously i did throw things around in terms of generosity i wasn't just going systematic throughout so there's bound to be a few disagreements let me know what i messed up on thank you all for making it all the way to the end of this video drop a like if you haven't already subscribe if you're new and i will see you all very very soon take care